this is of interest to me, especially this is an old photograph uh, collection here. What we have here is, is a collection of early uh, mechanical phonographs. Mm -hmm. As you know, recording sound was invented by Thomas Edison. And Thomas Edison, uh, his invention transferred sound to wax cylinders. And I'll show you. This is a, an Edison-type phonograph. This one that we have was, was made by a competitor, which became the, the Columbia uh, Recording Company. Mm. We still have the recording. Became later Columbia Broadcasting Company. The, the recordings were done on these cylinders. This is an example of one that uh, goes back to about 1900. The composition of the cylinders is wax and shellac and, and uh, uh, black, so mm -hmm. carbon black. The, the, this is a uh, recording of Stars and Stripes made by the Edison Company. Each of these two-minute cylinders, the early ones, like I have here in my hand, was recorded individually. They were not mass producible. You actually had to record through a megaphone onto a machine like this mm -hmm. that, that cut the grooves, wow. each one. So if somebody wanted to make recordings and they wanted to make 100 recordings, they had to sing this song or play the song wow. many times. But they got around that a little bit. What they did was they would uh, set up about 30 or 40 of these machines, similar to the one we have, <laughs> and they did them all running. They'd have a, a blank uh, cylinder in each one, and they'd say, okay, sing. And then <laughs> Alma, Gluck, <laughs> Alma Gluck would sing her song or, or whatever. I'll show you how this works. Oh, great, great. Of course, this has uh, a wind-up uh, motor inside with a big spring. So we'll give it a few winds and make sure it's, it's going. And on the back of this, there's a, uh, a pickup that's like, they call it a needle, but it's not a needle. It's no. just a pointy piece of sapphire. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the sapphire is connected to a diaphragm that vibrates like you have in your telephone. Right? Well, you hear that. Yeah. It's not very loud, so they had their own amplifier system. Now you have to give me a little bit of room to okay. put the amplifier on. Oh, yeah, it's much better. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is what you see in the old pictures. You see this big hand actually magnifies the sound. And this, and this one was probably held up by, some, by a uh, uh, some kind of a stand. Yeah, I would you imagine you wouldn't want to hold that well, all the you time. You don't want to <laughs> stand there and hold it. So this is the very earliest. This goes back, this technology goes back to about 1870. Wow. Now, uh, from there, the next technology that actually ended up putting Edison out of business, uh, a man by the name of Berliner invented a flat record. Hmm. The flat records are similar to what we have here. And we have two different types. This is a console. The flat record, this uh, flat record had the advantage that it could be mass produced. And that's what basically put the cylinder phonograph out of business. Hmm. That's the next technology. So we have we have these wind-ups. This is 1920, 1930. This is a Victor machine. This is advanced technology for its time. This one would go and uh, it had no external horn. Used a, a steel needle. Yep. Had its own little amplifier. Well, the horn is inside. We're listening to a recording that's about 1920 of a quartet. Hmm. 
you see here is the horn. This is the equivalent of that red horn that we have on the other machine. Very good. They made a piece of furniture out of it. This is a piece of furniture that people had in their living room. And this, and this one, uh, you had to keep a supply of needles. To, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, the needles would wear out. This is a table model of the same thing. We got this donated to us. It was uh, actually a, a wreck, and we restored it. Uh -huh. so this, this is a, does the same job as that one, and the horn is in here. The sound travels through the hollow arm and comes out through the, through the bottom. So that's, that's amazing right. technology. Even yeah, that's, this takes us up through about 1940. Also, right. In fact, when I went to uh, grammar school, we had a machine like this in our classroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you that was the early 40s, <laughs> World War II. And we have some 45s. And yeah. I then, then the flat records. Well, it t turns out yep. that Edison uh, decided he's going to try to compete with with uh, the Berliner records. The Berliner's patents were bought up by the Columbia people. Mm -hmm. uh, and Columbia was their big uh, competitor. But down here you see an Edison record, flat. Actually, uh, it's thicker than a regular record. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. It has a layer of plastic on the top and the bottom, and in between is a piece of plywood. Mm. Really? So it's, uh, it's about a quarter of an inch thick. The difference between this Edison record and the Berliner record is the way that the, the needle travels in the groove. In Edison couldn't get around the Berliner uh, patents because of this one particular thing. In the flat records that Berliner had, the, the vibrations go horizontally. Mm -hmm. they, they wiggle this way. In the Edison golden disc, which he called it. The vibrations are up and down. So he took his, di his, mem uh, his diaphragm and turned it per uh, perpendicular to the way Berliner had it. Yeah, Berliner's yeah. got it going this way, he did it this way. So he could get around the patent. However, Berliner's records were more popular, they were cheaper and mass producible, and off they went. Was there a difference in sound, one better than the other? No, I have, uh, I have a machine that plays these at home. The, mm -hmm. the sound is equivalent, oh. the same. Oh. It's just the technology is different, and only because of the patent. <laughs> well, from the flat records, this is the 78s that were popular, oh, up into the 60s, 50, late 50s, when we had the 45s. Right. We had the 45s, and then came the LPs. Um, the long playing records at 33 and a third RPM. Right. Then we be, then we got stereo, and then we got into uh, tapes, and then to CDs and DVDs and MP3. And now I think you can record about a million hours worth <laughs> of right music on, on something that size a of box. So, <laughs> size of it. a little box. Isn't it true though? That's right. That's technology. All of this is uh, where it started.